Aloha. It's Wednesday. It's April the 20th. It's 11 o'clock. It's time for What Now America? I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And today's title is Public Transportation, Mask or No Mask? Uh, we had a federal judge here recently, uh, a Catherine Mazel from Florida, uh, rather uh, a judge that hasn't really tried a whole lot of cases. And uh, she is, thank you, Cynthia. I guess that's zero. <laughs> <laughs> um, she has uh, struck down the mask mandate, the federal mask mandate. And that has great implications for this new BA2 variant that's uh, creeping its way into every state of the United States. And to complicate matters, uh, now there's confusion. And to what degree of confusion will take place is only up to a matter of time. I know that the uh, Department of Justice may appeal this ruling from Catherine Mazel, uh, but they're waiting for the CDC for more information. In the meantime, we will, we, grow, we will grow more confused and indecisive of when to wear a mask or when not to wear a mask. So that is the topic of the day. I'd like to introduce our guests, Jay Fidel and Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Good morning. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Cynthia. Hey, let's tackle this confusing topic because um, here we are. Do we wear a mask? Do we not wear, wear a mask? I know that um, the, uh, uh, the Department of Transportation has on some flights, uh, they were announcing mass mandatory requirements, and then they lifted them in, in mid air. And to the videos that you saw of, of passengers cheering, I'm sure that not all passengers were cheering, particularly those that were over 65 years old, for those who are immune compromised. Um, maybe they're not cheering. Jay, what's your opinion about what we're seeing right now where passengers and public transportation don't know whether or not they should wear a mask or to wear a mask? That was really weird when they cheered. You know? uh, I, I think that uh, it, it demonstrates that the country is, um, is all screwed up about this ma mask business. And it also demonstrates that uh, Trump is still alive and well. It's not only his legacy, it's his active actions right now. You know, you, you heard on Rachel Maddow that he's been behind all these uh, absurd objections to Biden's nominees being considered by the Senate, not just Ketanji uh, Brown Jackson, uh, but others uh, that have been rejected. And Trump has been behind that, been funding research and efforts to write them up, you know, to make them look bad. And um, so this is kind of another example. This is his legacy, the youngest federal judge in the country. Uh, as Cynthia said before the show that she hasn't tried any cases. The American Bar Association found her unqualified to serve as a United States district judge. And I accept their word. They're, they're, they're conservative themselves, you know. Uh, they're not particularly liberal organization. Um, and when they find them unqualified, appointed by Trump, that's really serious. Um, in any event, um, here's this unqualified judge, and she makes a nationwide ruling. She didn't have to make a nationwide ruling, uh, an unconditional nation, nationwide ruling to stop the mask mandate. It was playing right into Trump's hands, right into the QAnon, right into the, all the conspiracy guys, right into the, the uh, conservatives around the country, the base. The base won that. I can see Trump dancing since then about what this judge did. Um, she was doing his work for him. Um, and that's the legacy I'm talking about. He's, he's active, he's alive and well. We're probably not spending enough time watching him because he's doing this kind of stuff. Um, as for the people in the planes that cheered, I mean, I really wonder whether that was good coverage. Because as you said, Tim, a lot of the people in the planes would not have cheered. I would not have cheered at all. Um, here we have, uh, you know, obvious information on the front page of every newspaper in the country that were having a, a surge in various places uh, with a new, um, you know, um, mutation. Um, and uh, it's getting worse. People are getting sick. Um, and yet you have a federal judge making effectively a medical decision. I'm sure she knows as much about medicine as she does about the law. Um, <laughs> that there you go. So what we have now is predictably, I mean, if you, if you sat behind her and you looked out Across the bench at the time she made this decision, you would you would say, "What's going to happen? Is this going to help? Is this going to you know make COVID better? Is it going to save lives?" No, 
It's going to play to the right wing. That's all it's going to do. It was a political decision. And now lives will be lost because of it. Um, so, you know, if, if I was looking across her shoulder, I would never, ever have made that ruling. Um, I, I, I would want to save lives. I would want to save the country. We have other countries that are doing, you know, even draconian things, try to stop the spread, not the U.S. And as you said, Tim, it's in a state of absolute confusion now. Nobody knows which end is up. This is also part of the Trump legacy. Nobody knows which end is up. And at the end of the day, lives, lives, did I say that? Lives will be lost. Thank you, Judge Mazel. Yeah. Well, if you're a, someone who's going to be taking public transportation, be it transit rail or, or, or air flights, um, what's the recommendation? Do we all keep a mask in our back pocket just in case? Uh, certainly Amtrak has not lifted the, uh, the mandate. And um, New York City has not lifted the mandate. So is the solution just to carry a mask and wear it? Well, let me, let me, let me say something I, I was saying before the show began. Uh, and a lot of the confusion and the lack of um, you know, confidence in the government and the CDC is the government's own fault. And I'm sure they're well-intentioned, but uh, they, don't, they don't sit behind the judge. They don't sit on, you know, they don't turn the table and see how are people going to respond to our change in, change in advice, which has happened a number of times. You know, Rochelle, I forget her last name, um, you know, the CDC lady, now, she's changed her mind. Sometimes you say, what? Again? What? You know, can't we have a little consistency here? And so uh, over the last year, the Biden year, um, you know, these, the CDC has lost the confidence of people on both sides of the aisle. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think you have to make up your own mind about it. Uh, and you have to, you know, do your own critical thinking because the government is not here to help you. The government, you can quote me on this, is here to confuse you. Uh, they may be right in some, some moral sense. They may be right in some technical sense, but they're not right in communicating and dealing with a divided country, which is what we have. And they have, you know, effectively by their limp-wristed approach to this over the past year, they have created the division we see where, you know, people argue about it in schools and school boards and, well, everywhere. Um, and that's why some of the people in, on those airplanes, um, you know, applaud it. Um, but, you know, I, I think what we have now is, this, is a situation where Think Tech Hawaii should develop a subsidiary and call it the Think Tech CDC, because we would, we would, actually, we would actually do better critical thinking and we would be more consistent and more protective of the American public. Um, for me, um, you know, I mean, really, that's what, you know, that's what I think. Uh, for me, I am going to continue to wear a mask. And I have one fear I'd like to share with you guys. There are people out there uh, that have learned to hate masks. It's a political issue. If I wear a mask in a crowd now, I am making a political statement. Because people don't believe it's necessary, okay? And they think that I, that I am just making a political statement and they're going to be angry at me. They're going to be mad at me. I am going to be exposed to epithets and criticism and worse because I do wear a mask to protect myself and the people in the next seat. But that's not going to stop me. I want you to know. I am going to wear a mask just as before for my own safety and for the community. and. Because the think tech subsidiary, the CDC think tech, has, has suggested that I should be doing that. Right, Cynthia? Okay. All right. Well, Jay, <laughs> you know, you should be more forceful about your opinions about the <laughs> CDC and mask wearing. Um, you're a little timid, I think, sometimes. I, no, points well made, Jay. Well, Actually, points very well made. In fact, uh, Cynthia, uh, Dr. Tom Frieden, for a former director of the CDC, was just interviewed with Jake Tapper about, oh, about 15 minutes ago. And the question came up is, what's the recommendation for those who are smokers, over 60, overweight? And the direct quote from Mr. Doc, excuse me, from Dr. Tom Frieden was, when in doubt, mask up. Mm -hmm. uh, damn, damn the political uh, ramifications. Now, he didn't say that. I'm saying this. Damn the uh, political ramifications of wearing a mask. 
and uh, do what's going to save your life. And obviously, cloth masks are no longer suggested or surgical masks, but K90, KN95s or K95s uh, to try to protect you. So the question is, um, is Dr. Tom Friedman correct? He's, he's absolutely correct. I'm one of those, you know, compromised people that's been wearing a mask all along. Just barely starting to feel comfortable about not wearing one when I'm outside. Um, but now I'm going to be wearing them outside too, just because there's so many other people running around with absolutely no consideration for other people. They may be well, but that doesn't necessarily mean they can't make somebody else really sick to the point of dying. And so that's where I go. When did this country become so incredibly self-centered? When did I see recently that there are these long haul effects, even if you don't go into a hospital, right? even if you don't meet, need oxygen or anything like that, there are various things they are just discovering now that will affect your well, life forever, including, for example, a, a metric on brain size. Don't ask me how this happens, but yeah. apparently uh, long haul cases, your brain size shrinks and presumably your ability to do co cognition. Maybe your ability to do critical thinking for voting, too, you know? Well, Jay, you know, as just to address what you just said, as you well know, when it comes to any kind of long haul uh, mystery disease that's not directly correlated to, to a body part or an organ, uh, they say it's psychosomatic. And I guarantee you, those that have long haul COVID conditions that cannot be directly verified as a COVID related disease, they're going to say it's psychosomatic and the insurance company's not going to pay for it. That's what's going to happen because the numbers are going to increase. The dollars to treat such of uh, these uh, ailments will increase. And at some point, the medical insurance companies will say, no, it's all in your head. Well, that's already happening. That's exactly. not something yeah. that will happen. That's just something that is already happening now. So Thank I you, think we that. really need to worry about that. You know, this judge, just a little bit more about this judge, 33 years old, never tried a case, Trump appointee during the lame duck session just to be more specific about who she is and let's not forget another important part she's down there under desantis's wing right so who knows how much money she got paid for this. so will the doj appeal <laughs> well did you see that namby pamby statement about that that yeah, was so yeah. nam I, I will if i won't if i won't if i will I, 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 there's no I'm answer so to that, Tim. That. I'm so mad about that. Well, because it wasn't, I meant what I said. I said what I meant. That's for sure, Jay. Why <laughs> didn't they put an automatic stay on that order? I don't understand why they didn't do that. Here, yeah. they had just made a calculated medical decision to extend it to May 5th or May 3rd, right? And so it's just around the corner anyway. So what, these people can't hang on for, five more weeks, not even five more weeks, three more, four more weeks till it, it gets a medical review. And instead we're going to let, wait, one federal judge with almost zero experience on the bench, because what, she's been there for a year and a half. Um, no, she's never tried a case ever in her life. Um, and then all of these other things saying that she was not qualified. And yeah. yet, She's allowed to make well, a decision that. Controls. Well, if you saw her opinion, if you saw yeah. and read her opinion, which I saw excerpts from, yeah, I'll, no use Jay, I'll use Jay's terminology, Mamby Pamby. Well, <laughs> and worse than that, she did not hear one single uh, testimony in the case, nothing. She didn't hear anything for the case. She said she didn't need to, she could make the ruling on her own. And so she ruled and she cited that it was the Public Health Services Act of 1944. And she said that it had exceeded that time limit that's on that, that Health Act, the Public Services, uh, Public Health Services Act of 1944. Now, she, she should have gone to 1219 <laughs> and, and referred to the medical science of the uh, Middle Ages while she's at it. Exactly. So. so, I mean, here she is, like, no experience. She doesn't have a half a brain, it looks like, to me anyway. So where is she getting all this stuff from? 
you know, she's in Florida, the, just the, the heart of the most screwed up Trump supporters, the most screwed up Republicans that you can find anywhere in one cluster. And they're there in Florida. They're obviously not running for office anytime in Florida. I can say that. Um, hey, hey, Cynthia, I'm going to change topics here because we have a, and we always appreciate these things. We have a viewer, um, Mike, has um, commented, and here's his comment. Yeah. I think there's a big misconception about how masks are effective in preventing the spread of coronavirus. It is not effective in preventing a person from catching the virus but instead effective in spreading it from somebody that is infected. Can um, I speak to that? Because yes. I, I actually know some things about that. Um, if you are wearing a KN95 mask and it fits snugly around your face, granted your chances of being protected would be better if everybody else was wearing them too, because really the main uh, thing that it does is it stops, say I'm wearing a mask, it stops my um, you know, uh, virus from getting out of the mask. So it stops those droplets. But it also from... stopped if it's really tight fitting, K95, yes. KN95, well, not so much. Totally it actually protects done. you somewhat. Somewhat, yes, it does. So it's not a complete no. either or kind of thing. You're not as protected, but you are still protected. Where, where does this come from? from? It's a barrier between you and, and air that's contaminated. It's a barrier. Well, I don't need a PhD to tell you that it's going to stop the flow of the air and thus the um, and thus the virus one way and the other way. Uh, we've heard enough of, of this kind of you know uh, mysterious thinking from the CDC and from the right. It goes both ways, and you can't convince me of any other approach. Okay. That's why I'm going to wear a mask, and mm -hmm. and I do care about the community, but I also care about myself. And I believe that I am not going to be breathing in virus, not nearly as much, if I have a barrier between me and the air around me. And All right, Jay, let me go to you. Hey, go ahead, Cynthia, finish your comment. I want to go to Jay after you. Um, because that's exactly sort of what I just said, right? You're more protected if everybody's wearing one, but you are still protected if you wear one. And keep your distance, especially now, if people are not going to be wearing their masks. Distance is another thing that's important. and exposure time the time that you are exposed to somebody if you're standing you know almost face to face with somebody if you want a mask on and they are spreading virus you are probably going to catch it so okay. um, it matters a lot of different things are involved which is why it's a little confusing but definitely it's better to wear it than not okay Without i i do point. not understand why the cities this is to your point now tom Tim. Um, I do not understand why the CDC, um, you know, and the government um, didn't stand by their decision. Yeah. Their, their namby-pamby response to this judge was, was essentially um, admitted that they weren't confident of what they said before about May 3rd. Right. Are you more confident now because they gave this namby-pamby response or less? I mean, they, they don't seem to be able to stick on it in any way. And uh, they're, they're acceding to a judge who doesn't know which end is up. I don't understand what the government is doing for us. All right. Jay, well, let me, I, I, want, I want to kind of switch tack here a little bit. You know, if you're um, immune compromised or if you're older than 60, um, are you, are you going to be concerned about going in public? Are you going to be concerned about taking public transportation? And further, will that have an impact to retail sales and the economy? Well, you, if you, if you, you start give to me, yourself, you give me more credit, perhaps, than I should, should get, because I am I am not responsible for the economy either. Uh, I don't do a lot of shopping. I stay I've seen at you home. Shop. I've seen you shop. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I stay at home, like Cynthia. I'm I'm um, not, I don't go out. And that's been my MO for the past uh, whoa, <laughs> two, two years plus. Yeah. And guess what, Kim? Guess what, Cynthia? It's going to stay the same way because I don't want to catch it. I know a lot of people who had breakthrough cases and they were miserable. And not only miserable, they were worried about long-term effects. So 
I mean, I, I see it as a threat. And these guys want to blow it off. That's fine. It's not fine because they're blowing it off on me. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to my, my MO that I have, you know, been following for the past couple of years. I, uh, when it's safe, I want to I wanna have somebody credible, somebody consistent, somebody scientific and not political in any way tell me it's safe. But I don't have that. I have mounting confusion, confusion that's been spiraling around for two and a half years. Uh, I don't think the Biden administration has been less confusing. Well, it has been somewhat less confusing than the Trump administration. But the, the government, and, and particularly the CDC, seems to be a political organization, and I do not rely on them. Well, all this, what I just heard is I get a deferment. I'm paying back the Build Back Better piece of bet that you and I made many, many months ago. And I get a deferment on that. And um, good. That's, that's true. We're not going to go. We're not going to take any chances in the pizza parlor by now. That's right. So there you go. News in 2024. Some guys are opportunistic. You know that, Tim. I know one of them. I'm talking to one of them right now because he made that bet with uh, me. And you're talking to yourself? What? He set me up. Okay. Uh, Jay, um, also Dr. Tom Friedman said that um, many folks that are over 65 have not received their first booster. And yet it would show that there would be great, great benefit for them to do so. So we're not just dealing with a mask issue. We're also dealing with a vaccine or booster issue. Uh, what is the approach that they should take now that we're gonna have uh, an environment of non-mask wearing? Oh, it's much more serious for them. Mm -hmm. it, you know, clearly, I mean, but you know, on the other hand- Well, why, uh, why shouldn't they get, why wouldn't they wanna get their sec the first booster? Well, the, why didn't they have their first booster up till now? It's been you know, available for more than a year, a year and a half even. Okay, uh, but and, they got their vac vaccination, so they obviously had a fear of get contracting the virus. Right, I'm sorry. What I see would what prohibit you're saying. someone from getting their booster? Because the CDC said to get a booster. That's why, um, you know. And and I got a booster in uh, September of uh, 20, uh, 2021, I think it was, and another one more recently. And uh, I would do that if they, if they said, "Oh, go down for a, a third booster." I would take it. Um, there's really no point in taking a risk on this. But, you know, it strikes me that we have, inc it's increasing resistance. You know, the low-hanging fruit in terms of people who would take, who would take the vaccines um, is, is diminishing. Uh, they, they, don't, they don't want to take it. There's a lot of people Why? who have bought into that. Well, two things. One is um, the political said, aspect yeah. of it. Uh, I'm, I'll stop in a minute, Cynthia. It's all yours. <laughs> um, the political thing. And the other thing, okay, is confusion. We are rife with confusion. It's really a problem in this country. Cynthia, you have the floor. <laughs> I have um, a reason, a possible reasoning why people aren't getting boosters. And that is that they got the shots only because they were required to for work. They didn't do it because they felt like they should. They just did it because they had to. So there's a big difference. They're only going to get just that little bit that they have to get. They're not going to go any further, right? I think it's a, great, it's a great point, Cynthia. Yeah. And there's is. lots of other little reasons like that, too. They feel like, oh, I don't need that booster. I'm healthy. I got the shots. You know, I don't, I don't need any extra. That's for the people that are sick, you know, or the people that are compromised. You know, the, prob the problem is the booster so doesn't, let it's me, not clear that the booster actually deals with the, with the mutations. It's not clear. And, and uh, the best you can get out of the CDC is it, well, to some extent, but it, or, or Pfizer or Moderna, uh, to some extent. But it's not as clear that the, the, the booster will help you for the new, the new variations. Not um, the and this is a great concern. Booster because will. there's another point of confusion there. Well, apparently what they're saying is that the second booster will help you even against the Omicron and this BA2. So um, the first booster, no, would not help. It would only give you maybe they didn't know for sure, right? There, this is all sort of. Um, well, doesn't that play violent. into the? Doesn't that play into the resistance about vaccinations for those yeah. who say, "Why do it if it's not effective?" Does that play into their their uh, wheelhouse? Absolutely, it does. You bet. Of course, it does. But you know, all of this is just like experimental science, anyway. We've never dealt with any of this stuff before. 
it's not like we can have any specific answer for it, right? And that's partly why it gets so confusing and why we keep getting these odd, you know, they don't really match type of direction from the CDC. But I am sort of furious with the DOJ for saying, I will put us, you know, I will, you know, go after it, challenge it, if the CDC says it's okay. But they didn't put a stay on it while he waits for the CDC to decide. Right, let, me, let me clarify one thing. What do you mean put a stay on it? Um, the judge who issued the order would have to put the stay on it, or some other judge, maybe in an appellate court, would have to put a stay on it. It's not for the administration to put a stay on it. But I they thought do not have the DOJ power to do could, that. Could file a stay. I thought the DOJ could do you that. Have to, you have to request it. You have to apply for it. It's a motion. Well, but they're not. Why are no, they? No, they're not. No, they're waiting to see what the CDC says. And this, and it's been how? What three days more? Um, and, the CDC hasn't said. No, okay. Um, to me, it's like. They either need to say, okay, we're close enough to May 3rd, so we might as well just go for it. That's what they're saying. That's by implication. But yeah, yeah, by but they're not saying it. They're just doing it. This is the thing that that I don't understand. Well, your uh, your AG is uh, Marilyn Garland. He's Mabby Pamby. Well, yeah, we know that part, but um, that's not a surprise about anything, right? He seems to be Mabby Pamby about everything. So hesitant to do anything for. It's almost like he's afraid to do anything. It's not but, his decision. It's not well, his decision. It's the president's decision. He works for the president. When you talk about criminal prosecution, he be. makes his mind up. When you talk about this kind of thing, uh, Joe Biden calls him on the phone and says, uh, this administration wants to appeal that order. Um, you're my lawyer. Appeal the order. Okay, let me go to that, Cynthia. Sorry to cut you off, but he just made a very important point. You know. We have this uh, state confusion. We know the Republicans are going to, you know, really seize the moment. Uh, other than Donald Trump, most presidents say the buck stops here. Donald Trump never did that, never said that. Um, to what degree does Joe Biden take a hit with all this confusion? And how does that affect his popularity? I think he's going to take a big hit. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Cynthia. You go, go I, ahead. I, I, I concede my time to Cynthia. Thank you so much, since, yeah. Okay. <laughs> We won't go into why. Um, <laughs> um, so we got to think about some of the confusing factors here. New York has come out and said they are still requiring masks on all of their out of JFK. So when you might be on the plane, you go by whatever the airline says. But when you're in the terminal, if you're at JFK, you have to have a mask on. But if you're in New Jersey at LaGuardia, you don't, because New Jersey has not done that. Same with the ferry system that so many commuters use between New Jersey and New York. When they leave New Jersey, now that's okay. Back. Yeah, you I agree, Cynthia. The in the back pocket, yes. You have yeah, to that's confusion. Back. To what degree does Joe Biden take a hit with all this confusion? I said he takes a big hit. That's what big I. Big hit. Okay. I think he takes a really big hit. I think his. He has sort of undermined all of the good moves that he's made. Okay. To this Jay's point, point to Jay's point that J uh, he's in charge of this, not the DOJ. To what point is it his fault that he, he's not getting on the phone with DOJ and say, move? Is that his fault? And does he deserve a, a, a hit from the Republicans? I think he's going to take a hit from the Democrats, too, because okay. all of the good work that he's done so far is sort of undermined by this what, you mean you don't know what you're talking about this whole time we've been trusting you? And in reality, we see now that you're just winging it? That's what it feels like to me anyway. All now, right. So uh, Jay, to you, same question. Oh, I think he's going to take it. And I'll tell you why. Um, this is the Namby Pamby thing, you know, the uh, confusion, uh, the failure of, of, of having a, a decision he will stick by. It's problematic. And, um, you know, you can say there are people in his staff, his chief of staff, and people in the White House who are advising him to the best of their ability, and they're smart, and they're credentialed and all that. Um, but he's not looking at the way people react to these decisions or non-decisions that he makes. And little by little, people are seeing him as weak, okay? 
So what happened in Afghanistan last year, they see that as weak. Um, what's happening now with COVID, they see that as weak. And there are various other political things happening. You know, what happened to Build Back Better? What happened to my pizza, if, you know, for example? Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, the, the, the back story is that, he, that Tim was going to buy me a pizza um, uh, because it, I, I said that that was The would answer be, is 2023. Never. Well, how about 2022, the election? So uh, the other thing, and, and I have to add this, is that, is that right now we're in a situation with Ukraine. And uh, Joe Biden has stood up. He's been, you know, trying to coalesce the coalition um, and get Europe working again um, to deal with Putin. Okay. And so far it's been, what do I say? Timid. Sorry. Timid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, Putin has blown off the sanctions. He's blown off the, you know, all the things that Biden has done and coalition has done. He's as, as you know, just as Trump, he's drilled down he, relentlessly. And he is doing the same things that we have complained about, war crimes, atrocities, uh, weapons that are not permitted by the Geneva Convention, and on and on and on, killing people, raping people, shooting them in the back of the head. It's going on and on and on, and nothing Biden has done has even slowed that down. It's it, actually it's speeding up, and so you have to say, wait a minute, is this the same thing as COVID? Is this the same thing as failure to get anything through Congress? This is weak, and and when as I really hate to even think this, but as and when Ukraine can't handle it anymore, as and when something really bad happens there. It's going to be Biden's fault. There's no way he's going to escape blame on that. Okay, thank you. Jay, that'll be your final comment. Cynthia, we believe it or not, Cynthia, as strange as this may seem, we've run over time again. And so you okay. get the final word. Uh, your last comments, please. Um, okay, let's see. I, I guess I should stick with the main subject we've been talking about, huh? And leave that, that uh, Michigan State Senator's comment for another show okay but it was an important one just to give her one little quick shout out and then i'll stick to this <laughs> okay subject. sorry i knew you're gonna oh, do it anyway so go ahead up, uh state senator michigan state senator mallory uh mcmurrow and you just listen to her speech and i'll tell you jay a little while ago you said it's up to me to fix the world i'll tell you what i'll do i'll make everybody listen to that speech over and over and over and over again until they finally get it in their heads. Okay, back to the right subject. They have done, uh, Jay, you asked a little bit ago about studies and how do they know, do, do masks work, do they not work, right? Well, there was uh, a 2020 investigation into a hotel outbreak in Switzerland that showed that the people that only had face shields and no mask got sick and the people with masks did not get sick. There was another Tennessee study that found that communities with mask mandates had lower hospitalization rates than areas where masks were not required. So we do have some studies. We do have some actual data that we can base what we're saying here on, right? Not just personal. I know I'm going to keep wearing a mask. I'll even start wearing one outside again now um, okay. because of this ruling. So that, that's what I say. That's my Thank life. you. As always, Cynthia, your comments are dead spot on. Jay Fidel, <laughs> your comments are always spot on, no matter if I win or lose a bet with you. <laughs> and that's where we are today. I'd like to thank Jay Fidel, Cynthia Lee Sinclair for What Now America. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And please join us next Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Until then, aloha.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.